Welcome back to ONYT. So, the Toronto Transit Commission recently celebrated their 100 year anniversary, and I thought, why not make a narrated history video about it, also because my history of Go Transit video was a very successful video for this channel. So, here it is. But first, let's get to know about the network. The Toronto Transit Commission is the public transportation system which operates buses, streetcars, and a subway network throughout the city of Toronto, Canada. As of 2021, the TTC operates 140 bus routes, 4 subway lines, and 10 streetcar routes. The system transports over 1.6 million passengers on a typical weekday. But how did this all begin? We're going to take a look at the history of the TTC as well as public transportation in Toronto before the company, so let's go back to the year 1849. Public transportation in Toronto started that year with the Williams Omnibus bus line which was owned by Burt Williams. At the time the system consisted of four horse-drawn stagecoaches. It would run along Young Street between the St. Lawrence Market and the Red Lion Hotel in Yorkville. The bus line was an overall success and continued to expand its fleet over the years. In 1861 the City of Toronto issued a 30-year transit franchise for a street railway powered by horses which would become the Toronto Street Railway. It commenced operations on September 11, 1861 and would run along King and Young Streets from Yorkville Town Hall to the St. Lawrence Market. They soon made some major expansions over the years and acquired the Williams Omnibus bus line in 1862. However, six years later in 1868, the TSR was in some financial difficulties and could no longer pay any bond interest. The final expansion of the railway occurred in 1891, which was when the 30-year franchise expired. Ownership of the service would be passed on to the city itself, and then the Toronto Railway Company would take ownership on September 1, 1891. They would operate it for another 30 years under William Mackenzie and Associates from the defunct TSR. The city would require the Toronto Railway Company to electrify the network within three years, which brings a new fleet of streetcars to the network. The first electric streetcars were run on August 15, 1892, and the final run of the horse-drawn cars were run on August 30, 1894. In 1912, the Toronto Civic Railway was created to serve any streetcar routes that the TRC refused to serve. Both the TRC and TCR franchises ended in 1921, and ownership of both railways, along with a few others, were passed on to the Toronto Transportation Commission. The TTC would also run some new bus lines in Toronto using motor buses for the first time in the city. They took delivery of their new Peterwood streetcars between 1921 and 1923. They also experimented with a trolley bus network between 1922 and 1925, operating a line on Merton Avenue and Mount Pleasant Road. In 1927, the TTC created the Grey Coach, which was an intercity bus service which would link Toronto with the other points throughout southern Ontario. In the same year, the TTC took ownership of the Toronto Island Ferry, which links downtown Toronto with the Toronto Islands. As bus ridership increased annually, the TTC created the Toronto Coach Terminal, which was the main intercity bus hub in Toronto. Between 1930 and 1948, the city replaced various TTC-operated radial railway routes with bus routes. However, with the Great Depression taking major economic hits in the 1930s around the world, the City of Toronto had to cope with general welfare costs, but despite the Depression, the TTC began improving its network, and in 1936, the TTC purchased the first of its brand new PCC streetcars. They purchased 745 units, the majority of them were brand new, some of them were purchased secondhand from other operators. There were also many proposals during that time for an underground streetcar or subway network. However, TTC officials didn't approve of the idea until the Second World War. So in January 1944, the plan for a subway network running along Young Street was made. They also started planning an underground streetcar line running along Queen Street, however that plan was never carried out. In 1947, the TTC began operating trolley bus routes in the western end of Toronto, which were originally streetcar routes. Two years later, on September 8th of 1949, construction on the Young subway line officially began. For the trains that were being used on the line, a bid was accepted in November of 1951 from the UK-based Gloucester Railway Wagon and Carriage Company. A mock-up model of the new trains were presented to the public at the 1953 Canadian National Exhibition, or CNE. These trains would be known as the Gloucester G-Series. There were four different models of these trains ranging from G1 to G4. 
On March 30th, 1954, Canada's very first subway network opened to the public. At the time, there were 12 stations on the line between Eglinton and Union stations. Over 200,000 people tried out the new subway line on that day alone. That same year, the Toronto Transportation Commission would be renamed to the Toronto Transit Commission. In 1962, ownership of the Toronto Island Ferry was transferred from the TTC to Metro Toronto Parks and Culture. In the same year, the TTC was looking to expand the Young subway line north along University Avenue, so they were looking for new subway cars. So between 1961 and 1962, they took delivery of 36 new M1 subway cars built by Montreal Locomotive Works. And in the following year, the Young subway line was extended from Union Station north along University Avenue towards St. George Station. In 1965, Hawker Siddeley Canada began developing more new subway cars for the subway network, known as the H-Series, ranging between H1 and H6. Also in 1965, the rest of the Peterwood streetcars were finally retired. In 1966, the Bloor Danforth subway line opened, consisting of 20 stations between Keel and Woodbine stations. The first rush hour this morning brought an estimated 200,000 passengers on the line. The big problem was making passengers board the right trains at interchanges and cross-line terminals. TTC officials said except for the student rumpus, everything worked fine. In the same year, the TTC made plans to replace all streetcar routes with bus service, but was cancelled in 1972. In 1968, the Bloor Danforth line would extend west to Islington and east to Warden. In 1970, Government of Ontario Transit, or GO Transit, began its bus service with Grey Coach serving as the operator for the majority of its routes. Along with this, in 1973, GO Transit launched its dial-up bus service which would be jointly operated with the TTC to provide door-to-door -door service for commuters between their homes and their destinations. Between 1973 and 1974, the Young University subway line was extended north from Eglinton to Finch Station. In 1975, a private company created Wheeltrans, which is a paratransit system which provides bus service to people with physical disabilities. The service would be taken over by the TTC 10 years later. Also in 1975, what would become the deadliest transit disaster in Toronto's history occurred when a crowded TTC bus collided with a westbound GO train on the Lakeshore Line. The accident killed 9 people and injured 20 others. In 1978, the Young University line was extended north from St. George along Spadina Avenue up to Wilson Station. During that time, the TTC's PCC streetcars were beginning to age. In the following year, they took delivery of their new Canadian Light Rail Vehicle, or CLRV, built by UTDC. A similar streetcar model would be constructed between 1987 and 1989, known as the Articulated Light Rail Vehicle, or ALRV. 1980 brings yet another subway expansion on the Bloor Danforth subway line when it was extended west to Kipling and east to Kennedy stations. In 1985, the Scarborough RT opened, which is a light metro line that runs between Kennedy and McCowan stations. In the same year, the TTC presented the Network 2011 expansion plan. This plan would extend the TTC's current subway network to double its current size, adding three new lines the Shepherd, Eglinton West, and downtown relief lines. However, not much of the entire plan was ever constructed. Between 1986 and 1989, the final H-series cars, known as H-6s, were built. This would allow for the rest of the Gloucester G-series trains to be retired the following year. In 1990, Great Coach was sold to Stagecoach Holdings and ceased operations two years later. In 1993, trolley bus service officially ended and were replaced by Clean Natural Gas, or CNG, buses. Two years later, the TTC took delivery of 372 new T1 subway cars built by Bombardier Transportation. These trains would retire the M1 and H1 to H3 series subway cars between 1999 and 2001. Also in 1995, there was another tragic incident. On August 11th, a subway train running southbound on the Young University Spadina Line collided with another one between St. Clair West and DuPont stations. Three people were killed and 30 more were taken to hospital, injured. Over 100 people filed injury claims against the TTC. The main cause for the accident was a signaling error caused by a design flaw and an inexperienced driver who mistook the signals. 
A year later, the Young University Spadina subway was extended north to Downsview Station. This station would later become Shepherd West. In the same year, the PCC streetcars were retired from Toronto streetcar fleet. In 2002, the Shepherd subway line opened, consisting of five stations between Shepherd and Don Mill stations. However, the original plan was much larger than the current line we know today. On March 16, 2007, another massive expansion plan for Toronto's transportation network was announced, known as Transit City, which includes seven new light rail lines. However, some of those plans were cancelled. Only two of those light rail lines are currently active, them being the Eglinton Crosstown and Finch West LRT. A year later, there was a transit strike after a contract was reached on April 21st. By April 26th, the whole company was on strike, but the workers went back to work the following day. In 2009, the TTC adopted the Presto Card Fare system operated by government agency Metrolinx, which let riders tap and go across the TTC and other transit systems in Toronto. They would be fully implemented on the system by 2016. In 2011, the first of 234 Toronto Rocket train sets also manufactured by Bombardier were put into revenue service on the Young University Spadina line to replace the H5 and T1 trains on that line. The H5s were retired two years later, but the remaining T1s were moved to the Bloor Danforth line. This would allow the remaining H6 trains to finally be retired by 2014, ending the 49 year career of the H series trains. In October 2013, the TTC announced plans to give each existing subway line their own designated number based on the construction of each line. The Young University Spadina Line became Line 1, the Bloor Danforth Line became Line 2, the Scarborough RT became Line 3, and the Shepherd Line became Line 4. The future Eglinton Crosstown LRT became Line 5, and the Finch West LRT became Line 6. In 2014, the TTC got new streetcars, them being the Flexity Outlook, also built by Bombardier. These streetcars were the first modern low 4 streetcars in Toronto. They would become the only in the entire streetcar fleet, replacing both the aging ALRV and CLRV streetcars in 2019. In December 2017, Line 1 was extended north to Vaughan Metropolitan Centre. A month before, orders were placed for 30 new electric buses from three different bus manufacturing companies, and then 30 more, and later 300 more electric buses. The first of these buses were delivered by April 2019, with the three different models being the BYD K9M, New Flyer XE40, and Proterra Catalyst BE40. The first model to enter revenue service was the XE40 on the 35 Jane route in June, the BE40 on the 6 Bay route in October, and the K9M on the 116 Morningside route in September of 2020. The TTC currently has the largest fleet of electric buses in North America. In the same year, the COVID-19 pandemic caused ridership to decrease heavily and some seats on buses, subway trains and streetcars began to be blocked for social distancing purposes. So there is the history of the Toronto Transit Commission. Now let's talk about what's to come in the future as there are lots of exciting plans especially when it comes to subways. As we know, the Eglinton Crosstown and Finch West LRT are currently under construction and will open in 2022 and 2023 respectively. The Crosstown will run along Eglinton Avenue connecting Weston Road in the west to Kennedy Avenue in the east. The Finch West LRT will run along Finch Avenue West to connect Finch West Station on Line 1 to Humber College in Etobicoke, Ontario. Line 3 is set to close in 2023 to be replaced by an east extension on Line 2. And finally, the Ontario line will be a 15km light metro system that will connect Ontario Place to the Ontario Science Centre, which is planned to open in 2030. The TTC has been transporting Torontonians like me throughout Toronto for essentially a century now. As more people move into the city over the years, they will continue to provide transportation services throughout Toronto. Thank you for watching this narrated history video. Feel free to let me know if there are any errors or information that I have missed in this video. I also want to give credit to any sources that were mentioned in this video for information and media files. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to get the latest updates of new ONYT videos. I'll see you next time for another video. Goodbye.